Welcome to Cinemagma. In today's video, we will showcase the red carpet world premiere of the 2021 period action spy film titled The King's Man. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel to be notified when new videos are released. As history's darkest tyrants and criminal masterminds meet to organize a war that will wipe out millions, one man and his protege must race against the clock to stop them. The King's Man is an upcoming period action spy film directed by Matthew Vaughn from a script written by Vaughn and Carl Gatjusek, as well as a plot written by Vaughn. The film acts as a prequel to 2014's Kingsman, The Secret Service and 2017's Kingsman, The Golden Circle. It is the third part in the Kingsman film series, which is based on the comic book The Secret Service by Mark Miller and Dave Givens. Ralph Fiennes, who also serves as one of the film's executive producers, Gemma Arterton, Reese Iffens, Matthew Good, Tom Hollander, Harris Dickinson, Daniel Bruhl, Jimin Hounsou, and Charles Dance are among the ensemble cast members. The King's Man is set to be released by 20th Century Studios on December 22, 2021 in Real D 3D, IMAX, 4DX, and Dolby Cinema. After being postponed multiple times from its original November 2019 release date, due in part to the COVID-19 pandemic. Without much further ado, please enjoy the world premiere video. Please give a huge warm welcome to the man taking on the role of General Kitchener 
Well, it feels amazing that we're on a red carpet after such a traumatic year and a half or so of terrible COVID, COVID, COVID trauma. So to be celebrating this film, which, I mean, Matthew Vaughan, the director, always was passionate that the film had a cinema opening. He's a believer in the cinema, as am I, that the cinema experience should not be lost in our world of streaming. And so it's, it's a buzz to be here, to be honest with this film. I think it's a great film. The director sent me the script the normal way, you know, what, do you want to do this? I read it, liked it very much. I like the previous Kingsman. I think Matthew's a very original. Uh, he, he, he's an auteur director in a commercial context, which is quite rare. He has a very individual, unique voice, and he's great, great to work with. I play the Duke of Oxford. I should say it's set in the Edwardian era, early, early 20th century. I play the Duke, arist aristocrat, a gentleman, but a pacifist. He's suffered in his life, he's suffered the loss of his wife, he's been through some pretty horrendous war experience which has left him very anti-war and he has a son who he's keen to protect from going to war and the war is coming, the First World War is coming. So it's really about the journey, my, my journey as the Duke is get, getting to the point of recognition where sometimes when the forces of evil are so severe and so threatening you have, you're obliged to take up a weapon to defend the things you care about. Uh, they will. Uh, they can expect the great Kingsman film with lots of ex high profile, high velocity action sequences, a story of uh, a, a family emotion, a family drama, moving I think, and the, a, a departure, an interesting I think, an exciting departure set in, in a historical time with real historical figures. It feels great, uh, but bittersweet too. I'm going to miss uh, people and uh, events like this. You know, there's such a thrill when we premiere a new film particularly one in, on the scale of this one, and I will miss that, definitely. It's good to be here. I love working with Matthew. Uh, he is a, a, a terrific filmmaker, has a unique voice, certainly passionate about his craft and about the films that he makes, and he was a, just a, a, a great partner. I hope we were great partners to him. Well, this film is you know, very, very interesting because it, you know, it, it, it really is the setup for the two films that we've already seen. Uh, and there's a lot of heavy lifting to that, along with all the historical references to it. But I think he did a fine job not only setting up the premise of what we know will come, but of uh, portraying the world at that time. And I think it makes for quite an interesting movie. Uh, yeah, it's been a long wait. Matthew's been very patient, you know, but he's a smart guy and he knows when to put things out and when not to. So, you know, things happen when they're supposed to happen, don't they? Well, it's a very complicated story, so how he fits in is not an easy question to answer. Um, but I basically played Lord Kitchener, you know, who there was a very famous poster in the First World War, Your Country Needs You, uh, with an enormous moustache. Makes Poirot's moustache look subtle. Um, so th that's who I play. Um, and I get up to all sorts of things and then come to a sticky end. But there you go. Well, doing it, I just like working, actually, darling, you know. Uh, and the, the down light is when something finishes. You think, oh, all right, what's the next one, do you know? Uh, but it, it's Matthew Vaughan, is he, I'm not blowing smoke up his backside, but he, I mean, he is an extraordinary guy, actually. You know, he's a kind of one-man machine, and he does exactly what he intends to do, and does it really, really well. I mean, I saw this about six or eight months ago. It's fantastic. And I can say that absolutely honestly, you know? It's wonderful. Oh, mate, it's like the iconic location, really, in the UK to show, to premiere your film. So I'm just so thrilled. It's been a long time coming, so it's really exciting to share it in this kind of glamorous way. Um, can't wait. So Polly is the nanny, the kind of matriarch of the Oxford household. She really is the sort of emotional glue and backbone um, of the story and she keeps all of her men in check 
um, the Duke and Conrad. And she really is like the brains behind the operation, really. Um, there's more to her than meets the eye, as we find out as the film goes on. And um, she's incredibly clever. She's, um, she's got a kind of genius brain, um, very uh, <laughs> calculating. Um, and, but also she's fun, she's warm. She, she, she gives that kind of feminine um, injection of femininity into this quite male-dominated world as well. And, um, and I think she's a very lovable character. So hopefully we'll see more of her in the next one. Oh, wow. Well, I've been a massive fan of Matthew Vaughan for years. I think he's got such a singular voice in the film industry. And um, yeah, I was just thrilled to work with him. He knows what he wants. He's a visionary director. He's got such a great sense of style and taste. And, um, and it was great working with him. It, he was such an actor's director as well. He, gave, he let us do what we wanted to do and play. And yeah, we had an amazing cast on this. It really was um, everywhere you looked. Uh, just the most incredible cast. I remember at one point I had a scene with Alison Steadman who for me is like one of the reasons I wanted to be an actress and, and she has kind of a small part in this and I was just overwhelmed by <laughs> the quality of the cast. Um, so, uh, you know, headed by Ray Fiennes, of course, who is, you know, you know, a master, masterful actor. So it was wonderful. I, I was, you know, I was pinching myself every day and trying to act very cool, but not succeeding, so. <laughs> So I think people love the Kingsman's films because there's real cheek in them, there's humour, there's wit, there's that kind of British eccentricity and flair and um, the characters are really memorable. I guess with this film, obviously it's it's based a hundred years before the original film so there's uh, obviously it's a period film with real historical events which were pretty hefty and uh, awful and so this film has more of a serious tone there's a lot more emotion in this film which I think sets it apart you really feel the feelings um, but we you know establish why the Kingsmen were, fo were formed um, which is a really satisfying thing to learn if you like the original film so yeah it's different but got that same sort of style to it Oh, listen, it's a lovely feeling, you know, I'm, I'm like, it's, it's been much anticipated with all the delays and after a, a hard few years with, um, with this pandemic, I think it's a perfect kind of film for everyone to sort of sit and share the experience together. I'm excited, all my family are here and uh, it'll be nice to finally get it out there and share it with everyone. Yeah, so I play uh, Conrad and he's this, the son of the Duke of Oxford and he's this sort of young uh, idealist who wants to go and join the British military at the start of World War One. so um, uh, his father holds him back because he's this sort of infamous uh, pacifist that doesn't believe in violence and uh, has his own set of I uh, ideals and uh, morals that he, you know, my character wants to rebel against and he... Uh, he tries his best to sort of push back against these sort of set ways, you know, so he has to learn the hard way. I mean, Matthew's a really, uh, he's, a, he's a bold filmmaker, you know, I think he makes really interesting choices within this genre and, and Rafe's one of those actors that I, uh, I mean, I've, I've admired for years, so I feel like incredibly grateful to be like sharing the screen with him. It just feels like a privilege, you know, to be able to learn from him and, and, and watch him and watch him craft this performance. Just the way he treats everyone as well. Like he's, uh, he's retained such a calm and kind sensibility despite his like um, huge profile, you know, and an and incredible body of work. He's managed to like keep calm and, and be a, a, a nice person, which is not always the case, so. The training, you know, I, I very quickly learnt how difficult it was going to be. I think I said to Matthew at the start of the film, you know, I'll, I'll try and do as much as possible, but, um, you know, Matthew's very keen on trying to uh, get everyone in very early, so like we did like months and months of rehearsals, it was like six months with me and the stunt team and the incredible Brad Allen, who's sadly no longer with us but um, you know everyone involved in that department is so highly skilled and so highly trained that you just feel like you're in safe hands and you can just sort of give up to their uh, expertise you know and you don't have to like worry you know you're in, you're in good hands. So fans can expect from The King's Man um, something sprawling, something fun, um, 
uh, with a sort of father-son drama at the centre of it, you know? Uh, it's a relief. It's been three years since we shot the movie. Um, I'm thrilled that it's going to be in a cinema. I haven't even seen the film in a cinema. I've never watched it with people. I'm going to be like a pure fan because I can hardly remember the movie. It's been so long. Um, but I think uh, we will have to fight to keep cinema alive and hopefully this will help cinema stay where it needs to be. Well, the actual story was in Kingsman Secret Service when Harry Hart explained to Eggsy how Kingsman was born and what and why and when. And then I saw a movie called The Man, well, Reese saw a movie called uh, The Man Who Would Be King. And I thought, why don't we do The Man Who Would Be Kingsman? And decided to make an epic sort of historical adventure. And it fit, fitted Kingsman. And I wanted to go back to the movies that I loved as a kid and try and make it for a modern audience. Uh, difficult, really difficult, because you know we couldn't change history, and history wasn't necessarily designed for the structure of a screenplay. But we got there. We just had to take the challenge of historical events and interweave a fun fictional story around some very serious moments. Dream come true. They were all a delight. They're all brilliant actors. They all brought so much more to their characters than that was written, and I learned a lot from them. And. I hope I get to do another movie with them. They were great. The cast was a dream come true, literally. It was shot with old lenses. It was designed for. Um, it was designed for the. App, app. We literally used the lenses that Lawrence Arabia was shot on. Rebuilt the damn things. Kept breaking. Um, but we shot it for a widescreen experience, not for a telephone iPad experience. So. Uh, when you go, you do fall into the screen and it envelops you and I hope people, it's worth going to the cinema to see it, it really is. The fans can, the fans can expect uh, a epic, engaging entertainment. Finally, you know, after two, three years, it's been a long wait and, um, but oddly it seems like a, a great time actually for people to see this film because it's, so epic and huge and cinematic and entertaining um, you know you laugh you'll cry um, yeah it's just that you know god knows we all need it as a species we need a we good we need a good night out so hopefully this will supply it you know well i had to get uh, i had to get super fit uh, which is something i'd never done or even thought i was capable of um, so yeah really fit i had to learn a lot of stunts and but also I read up a bit about Rasputin and uh, you know what a fascinating character. I was kind of um, intrigued by him before um, and you know having read more about him and learned more about him he's like one of those enduringly mysterious uh, historical figures who will um, I think continue to enchant us way beyond this film. Well, um, yeah, we, we started training, you know, fitness training about three. I mean, I want to laugh even when I say when the words fitness training come out of my mouth. But we did, you know, really hard work, like proper hard work. And um, yeah, and then, of course, learning a whole new skill set in terms of the Cossack dancing and, um, and fighting and, and, uh, and all that. It was a really, I loved it. You know, I was, um, I'm a very curious person anyway, and I love learning new things and it was a great opportunity to do that and um, and the end result is amazing um, yeah it's such a thrill for an actor usually you know when you're just doing a two-hander scene you know pretty much what it's going to look like but with an action sequence it goes through so many hands and so many experts and geniuses that it's always a thrill as an actor to watch yourself doing things that quite patently you're you're incapable of doing in real life you know I think I don't. I think Kingsman fans um, expect to be not just pleased and satisfied. They ex they expect to be surprised, uh, and they will be certainly with this. Um, you can watch it if you have, if you've never seen a Kingsman film, but if you're a Kingsman fan, there's plenty in it to um, to make you chuckle uh, in recognition on on various things. But this film it, again, it's it's, a, it's an evolution. Um, this is this has a lot more poetry and pathos and humanity in it possibly than the other films. Um, parts of it are really genuinely deeply affecting, you know. It's very exciting because uh, it because <laughs> it's become such an unusual event. So uh, it would be nice if um, 
everyone came out to the cinema like they used to and saw this amazing cinematic sort of uh, roller coaster of a film which deserves to be seen 100 foot wide and 40 feet high if possible. The, the three characters I play all have very distinct personalities so uh, I just had to remember which one I was doing but it wasn't that difficult after four hours in makeup to know which one I was supposed to be. It depended on the mood I was in. One was one was sad, one was uh, always in a good mood and complete narcissist uh, and one was quite sensible and I can definitely veer between those three things so uh, I would just uh, hope to be in the appropriate mood for the character I was playing. Fun, a lot of fun. Uh, the cast is, a, is a, a very sweet group of people and we all seem to get on very well and Matthew is a real force of nature. I didn't know him and uh, He's a very, very impressive man uh, and just full of drive and creativity and which is all on the screen. Uh, if you see it, the, just the energy, that is all him. Uh, amazing. Well, I think they can expect the humour and the mad catness and the brilliance of the first two, but this is also has a lot of darkness in it because he's taken you know, he's taken the Kingsman spirit and put it into a real historical event, which was the First World War, which was obviously a very dark and painful time. Uh, so, in the same way that Zelig and Forrest Gump, you know, take a character you know and plop them into history, and you follow it, you see it through their eyes, we're looking at the First World War through the, the Kingsman fraternity, which is a, a strange thing. So it goes through different tones. It's original Kingsman spirit, but then it takes you to other places. It's all sorts of different moods come up at different times. It twists and turns and takes you by surprise again and again. Fans can expect uh, to laugh, to be stunned into silence, uh, to be and to be amazed. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and comment on the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to be notified when new videos are released.